this might be the first time we're going to Denmark. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it might be the first time. I know we've been to Sweden, we've been to Norway, but I don't recall another case in Denmark. Okay, so this case occurred in the year 2017, and it is the case of Kim Wall and Peter Madsen. Okay, so let's start with some background on Kim Wall. She was born on March 23rd, 1987 in Trelborg, Sweden. Her parents' names were Joachim, I may be pronouncing that wrong, Wall and Ingrid Wall. Ingrid is a journalist and Joachim is a photojournalist and they are both authors and they have co-authored a book together. Now Kim inherited her parents' love for journalism. She wanted to carve out a space for herself in what she called the male-dominated world of foreign policy. She said, quote, I want to know how the world works, and I hope that I maybe one day can learn enough to make a difference, end quote. She was a brilliant, brilliant person, very well educated. She received two master's degrees from Columbia University in New York City, one in journalism and one in international affairs. She wrote a variety of truly interesting articles. Some of her subjects, for example, were a plus-size pole dancer from Long Island, Chinese feminists who descended upon the Women's March in Washington, and a Sri Lankan politician who called herself a colonel. She traveled all around for work, but she was based out of Copenhagen, Denmark, where she lived with her Danish boyfriend. So she was Swedish, her boyfriend was Danish from Denmark, and they lived together in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Now, in August of 2017, the couple was preparing to move to Beijing together. Now, around that same time, she had been talking to an editor at Wired magazine, and she wanted to do a story on Madsen's Space Lab and Copenhagen Suborbitals, a crowdfunded amateur space program. So she had reached out to the director, whose name was Peter Madsen, about having a possible interview. And it was August 10th when he got back to her and said, today's a good day for it. She was in Copenhagen at the time, so it was going to work out for her to interview him that day. Now, let me stop for a second to tell you a bit about Peter Madsen. He was born in 1971 in Denmark. His mother, Annie, was more than 30 years younger than his father, Carl, and his mother had three other sons from two different fathers. Carl was not the father of any of those three boys. Carl was the father of just Peter. Now, allegedly, Carl was abusive, and Annie had left him when Peter was about six, and she took all the children with her. After a couple of years, Peter wound up moving back to live with his father. They really got along very well. They had a shared interest in rockets, like rocket ships. Now, Peter, to 
on August 11th at 10.30 a.m. 
some kind of video she was working on. And she said, could you motivate me with a threat? So this is what she said after that. Quote, he says he has a murder plan ready in the submarine and I tell him I am not afraid. You have to be more threatening. He talks about the tools he wants to use and I say, oh, it's not threatening. End quote. And she thought this was all a joke. But anyway, he kept talking to her and trying to make it, you know, darker and darker. Talked about inviting a friend into the submarine where they would begin cutting her up. And still the woman didn't take it seriously and then she just changed the subject a few moments later. And she ultimately gave all these texts to the police as evidence. A psychologist as well as other doctors evaluated Peter Madsen after he was charged and they said that he appeared, quote, highly untrustworthy, perverted, and sexually deviant, end quote. They said he was not psychotic, but that he had narcissistic and psychopathic personality traits, including lack of empathy and the ability to manipulate others. Finally, on January 16, 2018, he was charged with murder indecent handling of a corpse and S.A. The prosecution accused him of having tortured Kim before killing her by either cutting her throat or strangling her. His trial began on March 8th and by April 25th, 2018, he was convicted of all three charges and he was sentenced to life imprisonment with the chance of parole. The judge described the crime as, quote, a cynical and pre-planned essay of a particularly brutal nature on a random woman who, in connection with her journalistic work, accepted an invitation for a sailing trip, end quote. Madsen appealed the sentence but the original decision was upheld. Madsen was the subject of a Danish documentary in September of 2020. And in that documentary, he admitted to having killed Kim Wall. He said, quote, It's my fault she died, and it's my fault because I committed the crime. It's all my fault. There is only one who is guilty me, end quote. Then the next month, in October of 2020, he attempted to escape from prison, and he was successful, just a tiny bit successful. He threatened a prison employee with a pistol-like object that he had somehow created. It wasn't real, but it looked real. And so he had gotten out of the prison, he also had what he claimed to be a bomb belt, also looking very real. And the bomb squad was deployed, and he was surrounded and apprehended by the police right outside of the prison, and he was taken back into custody. So he kind of made it right outside the prison, and then he was caught. So I don't think that will help him get parole, but who knows. And that's the case. So what are your thoughts? I will share some of mine. First of all, rest in peace to Kim Wall. She was only 30 years old. She was brilliant and beautiful, and so many people loved her. And she was on the road to do great things with her life when this man came and stole it from her. My heart also goes out to her family and friends. Now, can we learn anything from this case? You could say, well, journalists 
therapists can learn that they need to be more careful when they do their interviews. You know, like, she was a woman who went down in a submarine with a man. You know, doesn't seem like the safest scenario, but here's the thing. Most journalists are well aware of all the risks. They try their best to be as safe as possible. Sometimes the story is so big that they are willing to take a risk because they really want to cover something. But in this situation, she never ever would have dreamt that he would be a dangerous man to her. I mean, who would have thought? He wasn't just some nobody, right? He was a very smart, well-known, he was like a celebrity inventor, a scientist. He had just created this amazing submarine. Why would she think he would do anything to her? I mean, she was going in the submarine with him. People knew where she was going. You just wouldn't think it. You wouldn't. Nobody would ever think, but, you know... You can be surprised by people. He certainly did not seem like the deranged killer type. He surprised us all. The main question that I have in this case is, was it really premeditated? Did he plan this out ahead of time? Did he know he was going to do this to Kim before they ever went down in the summary. I'm not sure. Now, I know he voiced that little plan to his previous sexual partner a few days before, but, you know, that just may suggest he had that sort of thinking in his head, but it doesn't mean he decided this is the day I'm gonna do it. And the reason why I question it being completely planned out like that is that he destroyed his own submarine in the process. You know, to destroy the evidence, he destroyed the submarine, which didn't work out, but he, he thought it would for some reason. So I don't think that would have been part of a plan. But they say premeditation doesn't have to have started, you know, days before or even hours before. It could be something you just thought of for couple of minutes, you know, and then did it. it. It doesn't seem that he ever disclosed exactly what went on down there in the submarine, but rather he just admitted that he, he did it. He did what they had accused him of, but he didn't give details. So, as far as I know, it's not known exactly what happened. Now, do I think he could be rehabilitated and be released into society safely? I would say that when the time comes for them to evaluate him, they need to be extremely careful because someone who could do something as evil as this is not likely to change. So, I am going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found it to be relaxing.